p.m., uh, t 10 a.m. So we're going to get through this agenda as quickly as we can. We're, our first presentation today is uh, You Can Speak For Me, Hope Dudley, if you'll come forward. And we have um, what you have handed out to us. Um, before you, as you come up, um, for people who do not know you, we continue to extend our deepest condolences for the loss of your son. Um, and we appreciate that you have turned um, your fight to solve unsolved murders, um, the, the devastation of your family to help so many other families. And so many other families depend on you, not just for bringing attention to what is happening, but their moral support of how to get through the grief and so we just want to really thank you for being here and welcome to Law and Public Safety. Um, I also like to say uh, thank you uh, to uh, Law and Public Safety uh, members. Uh, my condolences um, to Vice Mayor Smith and his family. Um, it's going to be quick giving you 12 years of my life through this presentation, but it starts off with my son was murdered in 2007 in a drive-by shooting. A press release went out of my son and the picture that they showed um, didn't represent who my son was. It was actual a mug shot that went out. So what I did was created a, war, a reward card to show that my son was almost 200 pounds at the time. So that was very offensive to me, knowing that my son was murdered and this picture was put out on him. Then I started noticing other pictures of people just like, uh, this is like a juvenile picture of her. And when her family asked me if I would do a reward card for her, I only do pictures that actually represent who the family is to bring awareness who that person was. This is another uh, flyer that I had put with parents of murdered children uh, when my son uh, was murdered detailing uh, his life and some of the things that happened to him. Then I uh, was directed my, I was never notified when my son was murdered. Uh, after I buried my child, the night he was murdered at the um, hospital, I asked everybody for a business card. And after the funeral, I started calling the business cards and finally wound up to the homicide department to try to find out what happened to my son. At that time, they directed me to Crime Stoppers to receive some flyers to pass out in my community. This was the flyer that I was given that did not represent who my child was or where we lived at or who is this sketch that's on the ground that I'm supposed to pass out that should have said this was my son. So that was the birth of You Can Speak For Me. This was one of our first reward cards to my children. I have five children, two sons and three daughters. They would go out at night passing out these reward cards and families start asking them who was making the reward cards and they said my mother. So what I wanted to do when my son was murdered, I was told that his body had bled out. So the first thing I wanted to do in my heart, I felt like to give something back as far as the blood was concerned. So I did a blood drive to put something back. Then everything that had something to do to bring awareness, I started channeling my energy there. The first, uh, one of the first events that I participated in was uh, uh, bras with a flare on the square. So what I did was I did a homicide bra and put it on the square to raise awareness for breast cancer. Then I had come to City Hall because it took me two years to find out that my son was murdered, had actually left the Ritz nightclub the night he was murdered. 
to come to City Hall and tell them that the club was violent and it wasn't any security in there. It was two months later when a, a father's son was murdered on the dance floor in the Wrist nightclub. When he came to me, I asked him, can I make you a petition flyer? At that time, we uh, received over 10,000 petitions. I even went as far as when our homicide department was gonna lay off some of our cold case detectives. I even did a jingle and did a vigil in front of District 1 police station that didn't lay off our um, homicide detectives. I had, took a year after my son was murdered to go everywhere he went that night. And I wind up, uh, me and a, another mother by the name of Peggy Harris, we wind up at the Wrist Nightclub and we stood out all night and observed the violence that was going in and out of the club. And when the time came up for the liquor license, again, I came back to City Hall and let them know what I saw. I was then escorted to Columbus to testify against the uh, liquor license and later the club was closed. So my energy was channeled in bringing awareness of the crime that's going on in our city. I took and I wrote my prayer on a bookmarker and I sent them to the prisons and I've worked with four wardens out of ODRC. And the warden, Terry Collins, at the time came to Cincinnati and said, we'd work with you by start putting posters of unsolved homicides in the prisons in ODRC. I later felt like, okay, we can do posters, but it's only six people on a poster. I had one of the wardens introduce me to another mother that had did playing cars in Florida. I asked the mother to send me uh, some decks of cars. She sent me 36 decks of cars, and I started sending them to different people, asking them about donating uh, funds to actually get these cars in prison. Well, at that time, um, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Michael Curitan they picked up the project and they did a thousand decks of cards. But at the time that they did the cards, they just printed from faces that they had. But when it came time for the prison to actually accept the cards, there were no permission slips. It took me seven years to connect permission slips from each family on the cards. When the cards finally got into the prison, it was the second deck of cards that I had to personally pay for myself. I asked the prisons, when the cards arrived there, can you please take a picture and show me that they were actually there because I had been collecting permission for seven years just to get these cars in the prison. And this is the actual picture that they sent me with the cars going into all of ODRC prisons. This is actually 2,500 decks of cars. These are all the locations of the prisons that the cars are in now. I received a letter from South Carolina Crime Stoppers telling me that 27% of the states have printed cards of unsolved homicides, and only four states in the United States actually have cards in prisons, and our state is one of them. The cards, newspaper articles, uh, went out everywhere. We received a lot of um, calls about the cards and asked the homicide department did any cases get solved, and they said yes. Our, when it's a homicide, our program gives family what is called a family packet. And in that packet is information of 
uh, a permission slip, filling out victim's compensation, and knowing your rights as a victim. Back in January, we did a, a flyer and posters of unsolved women, posters, unsolved women homicides. And two wardens from ODRC came back and they took 300 posters of unsolved women homicide back to the facility. And since then, I've sent more back to ODRC. And people ask, do our cases get solved when we do the flyers? Cases are always solved by forensic science, good investigation, community engagement, and good prosecution. And these are just some of the flyers of families that we have solved. And when we print a reward court for a family, we give them a choice to pick out whatever picture they want. We don't take the worstest time of their life and put it on a flyer. Some mothers want their son's picture with their cap and gown on because that was the happy time in their lives. So those are the pictures or the images that we try to show of people that have been murdered. Every poster and every playing card that goes in the jails and prisons are personally funded through our donations. Our program receives two grants from the Ohio Attorney General's Office. It's SVAA and VOCA, uh, Victims of Crime Act and State Victims Assistance Act that it only is to support the victim of the crime, not the prisons. But families see prisoners, guys, go in and out of prison and jail and commit these crimes. Our playing cards and our posters need to go there, but there is no funding for that. Only donations and from my own personal uh, funds, pay for these playing cards and posters that goes in our prison. I wanna thank you for this time. I hope I didn't go too fast where you didn't understand what I was saying. But my goal here is today, if I was asked what would I want the city to do, I would really would want a permanent cold case task force in a homicide department. Not two uh, homicide detectives that have been lit here from BCI, but we need our own cold case task force. And whatever, right now we're working on two decks of cards, which is 108 faces. So far, I've gotten all the faces except for 10. So it should be finished within the next two months. But right now, we work, we work with Butler County and we're working with Middletown, but 80% of the faces on the cards are the city of Cincinnati. So whatever you can do to support this project would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Hope Dudley, for all of the work um, that you do in this very important um, crisis that our city and many cities are facing. Um, a couple of questions for you. If someone is listening to this presentation, how do they get a hold of you? Um, they can Google my name, Hope Dudley, H-O-P-E-D-U-D-L-E-Y, or they can go to our website, uh, you as an umbrella, you can speak for me, uh, dot org, and you can leave a message there. Whatever, um, you can always, I said my, my phone number's on Facebook and everywhere, so I'm always open and available. And then, um, Ms. Dudley, where, if someone wants to, is listening to this and wants to make a contribution to support your efforts, 
where would they make that contribution or, or who do they make the checks payable to? They can make the checks payable to you can't speak for me. You can speak for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then my last question is regarding the $1,000 to $2,500 reward um, because that's something you lobbied very hard um, with Crime Stoppers on. Talk a little bit about that before you go. Well, uh, my son was murdered September 29th. Uh, two weeks later, I was sitting on a Crime Stoppers telethon after I received the flyer. I have, I started off with Crime Stoppers as an NAACP member that became a Crime Stoppers member that later became a member of Crime Stoppers. I have been asking them about upping the reward, even if it's temporary, to see how many people will actually come forward. Right now, there's no uh, data because this is just the first year, but I brought it up to Crime Stoppers, up to the board. I brought them flyers and information, and they agreed to raise the reward for $2,500. Congratulations on that on that lobby, and I just wanted the public to hear um, and all of the volunteer work that you continue to do. Um, a lot of people, you know, your son, because he's on the front of of the page here, um, with the date of September the twenty sixth, twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. My glasses. See, I can't see. Um, 2007, but you know, give us a little, just a briefing on on him, where he was murdered, and what he was doing, why he was targeted in your mind. Because a lot of people hear this information and they just think the kids that are on this on these pages are just bad kids, and they're just into something, they're just doing something, and it's I think it's a a way to push it out. And, and instead of having a mom come before us and they say, that wasn't my kid, that wasn't our situation. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Uh, my, um, my son had, uh, went out with some friends of his. They had, he had been hanging around the house and they finally uh, got him to go out. But he had two friends that had been going back and forward, um, shooting at each other and different things. And so my son finally went out that night with him. Uh, they first went down to uh, Final Fridays down on Garfield, and then they left there and they went to the Ritz nightclub. My son was a passenger in the um, right side uh, of the car. And the one of the guys who was arguing with another gentleman that was with them decided to get out the car and get in another car. So the people that had been targeting this young man thought that he was in the car that was with my son. And when they pulled up and they fired at the car, they thought my son was in there. So he was not the target from what I was told. He was a, a innocent bystander in a car that could have happened to anyone. You don't know sometimes what kind of drama a person is in when you get in a car with them. And I tell my children, do not get in a car with somebody that you don't know or you don't know what's going on in their life. If you need a ride, call me, I will pick you up. Right now, you can't just hop in a car. I mean, you can't even get in a, a Uber. You have to be very conscious about who you ride with now. I, I know you're probably referencing what we've been reading about of the young college student who a, a car pulled up and she thought it was an Uber and it wasn't an Uber and she got in that vehicle and ultimately lost her life. Um, that didn't happen here locally, that's a national story. Right. But a wake up call, I have children that are in college, I have children that are here that use Uber all the time and Lyft, all of these services that they have to, they have to put their sixth sense 
in place and know where they are at all times and ask all the right questions. And, um, and so this just happened to a young person um, and it's so unfortunate that she lost her life getting in a car that she thought was an Uber and it, or an Uber driver and it wasn't an Uber driver. But that would be the same thing if the Uber driver had been targeted and not know. Mr. Chair. Vice Chair. Ms. Stark, thank you so much for coming today and sharing your personal story. And when I look at all the things that you have done to create, you can speak for me. This is amazing. I mean, as a mom, I know Vice Mayor Smitherman feels the same way. I mean, thank you for doing this for all of our kids and for everyone out there. And I just want to make sure that anyone that's listening, it's called You Can Speak For Me, but the U is the letter U, U. not Y-O-U. So you can speak for me org. And I would really encourage anyone out there that wants to get involved, that can make a donation, because this is really important. I mean, just thank you so much for being here and for all you do for this organization. This is incredible of, of where you've taken this. And, you know, thank you for being out there and leading the charge on this in, in Ohio and in Cincinnati. I, I just want to leave you with this. Uh, we start printing flyers per district. So if it's a, a homicide and we print a flyer for uh, a reward court for a family, we actually print those flyers out too during the time of the visual and say, hey, these are other homicides that's happened in your community. So the families and the people in all five districts are know that these are all the unsolved homicides within your district. Thank you. And I also think that you're a great example of what cooperation is with our police department. And we need more and more and more cooperation. People that have information, um, for them to call Crime Stoppers, for them to say what they know is going on. And this whole, men this whole this mentality about no snitching. We can't say enough about cooperation from the community with our police department. And we need more of it. We have some of it, but it's not at the level that I'm satisfied with. And there are people out there that are watching this right now that are aware of a murder. They're watching their cable TV and they're aware of a murder. Some of them even go to the funerals. They're involved mm -hmm. with the murders and they show up to the funerals where they've been involved or directly took someone's life. On behalf of the Homicide Department, I'd like to say that we actually have more cases solved than unsolved. When my son was murdered, it was almost like 70 cases and all of them were solved, but 19. So when you look at the Homicide, our Homicide Department is really solving a lot of cases, but we need the community to come up and see something and say something and not leave these criminals on our streets. We'll leave on that note. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm 